We have started. All right. Is this the first slide? Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. So tonight we have Eric Perfecto uh, from IBM Research in Albany, New York, uh, going to give us a talk on 2.5D and wafer level packaging. Um, we're presenting in with cooperation from the IEEE EPS Mid Hudson chapter, who has helped promote this. We'll go ahead to the next slide, Richard. Um, so this is just the agenda, what we can look forward for tonight. And uh, I'm going to say a few words here, and then we're going to move on to our our presentation with the question and answer to follow. Uh, here, our, our, the IMF New England's upcoming schedule here is uh, for November 5th is our next symposium session. And that will be chaired by Tom Terlizzi. Um, day was at one o'clock in the afternoon. It'll be on Zoom, so anybody's welcome to attend that as well. Uh, you must pre-register, and that's on our RF and microwave session. So, because of uh, the COVID pandemic, we haven't been able to have in uh, in-person meetings or sessions. So we've gone to a uh, virtual format for both our meetings and sessions, and we're alternating each month. So October is a technical meeting, which takes place in the evening. November will be a Symposium session taking place during the afternoon, and that will continue on for the foreseeable future. Go ahead, Richard. Okay, I'd like to introduce our speaker for tonight. Um, Eric Perfecto has 38 years of experience working in microelectronics, first at IBM on the development of multi level copper polyamid advanced packages for high end systems followed by the de development of UBM and lead free solder processes and yields for our flip chip in 2D and 3D packages. As part of the IBM Microelectronics Division divestiture, Eric moved to Global Foundries where he established a silicon photonics packaging assembly line. He returned to IBM Research at Albany working on heterogeneous integration packaging. He holds an MS in Chemical Engineering from the University of Illinois and an MS in Operations Research from Union College. Um, he's the author of 79 technical papers, four book chapters. He served as the 57th ECTC General Chair, an IEEE fellow, fellow elected uh, Board of Governors me member of the elect IEEE EPS and an EPS Distinguished Lecturer. Uh, so before we begin, um, just a few comments. Uh, this presentation is being recorded and uh, to uh, you can uh, check on our chapter website for the availability of the recording. It'll probably take a couple of weeks for us to uh, um, get it ready for access. Um, usual etiquette for virtual meetings. I think I, I think everybody's used to this by now, uh, just to uh, minimize the um, extraneous noise, I would ask everyone to remain muted while the speaker is presenting. Um, for questions, um, there are basically a couple of ways to do it. Um, after the, the presentation is finished um, and we're in the question and answer period, you can uh, uh, click on the raise hand option that you'll see uh, uh, by your name in the uh, uh, participant window. Um, there is also a chat function on WebEx, which uh, uh, you'll see a little um, little word bubble, and uh, you can uh, you can use that if questions occur to you while the presentation is going going on. So with that, um, I would like to uh, hand it over to Eric, and uh, we'll get started. Oh, thank you, uh, Richard. Uh, let me come over here. Okay. Uh, I don't see Eric's uh, picture. Oh, hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the uh, uh, in support. It's, uh, this talk is supported by the uh, EPS uh, Distinguished Lecture uh, Program, and. I would like to dive into the 2.5D and wafer level finality. These new technologies are really expanded the uh, uh, the packaging 
uh, portfolio uh, tremendously. I will say that uh, the APS has been very active in the heterogeneous integration uh, roadmap, and a lot of the slides from these presentations are taken uh, from the uh, roadmap, and you can get the full roadmap chapter by chapter. There's uh, over 20 chapters uh, at the uh, IEEE EPS.org. Just search for uh, HI or heterogeneous integration roadmap, and you'll see it. The agenda today is uh, as follows. We briefly talked about more slow and heterogeneous integration, followed by a wafer level fan, fan out and 2.5D and 3D. And finally, ending with some ground rules and a summary. Now, the more slow uh, states that the number of transition, the transistors uh, on a silicon chip will double approximately every two years. And that, in turn, uh, translated into, uh, in this particular chart, the calculations per uh, second per $1,000. Uh, over here is shown in an exponential fashion, and this is really enabled the whole PC uh, industry, et cetera, uh, high-end pro processors to come alive. But uh, this technology, meaning the semiconductor technology, is uh, coming to a plateau. And now we are seeing that uh, system level integration through packaging is really carrying out the, uh, the, the essence uh, of the Moore's law as we continue. Now, why is that? Uh, mainly because the Moore's law has uh, reached uh, a scaling performance uh, limit as well as uh, very, very high uh, development and fabrication uh, and equipment cost, uh, to the point that uh, today there are only uh, three fabs in the world that are really uh, doing advanced nodes. And as, as you know, just uh, this week or last week, uh, Intel announced that it was uh, vendoring out uh, some uh, seven nanometer uh, production to TSMC. And so, the, the group is, you know, is becoming even smaller. Uh, and you can also hear uh, rumors of this uh, U.S. Uh, Senate uh, trying to get uh, a package uh, to promote the semiconductor industry over here at the U in the U.S. Now, packaging is really uh, coming through to save the day, and that's the uh, bulk of this presentation. And what you're seeing is really an uh, increase in performance through an increase of wiring rules, uh, interconnection wiring rules, that is allowing the chips to chip uh, connection uh, to be closer together. And it's, uh, the closer they are, the less thermal requirements uh, are needed and, and also a re reduction of the parasitics. So we also have uh, from a packaging perspective, an increase in I.O. connectivity. And that, by that I mean the solder connection uh, that goes from the chip to the next level of package is continuously reduced. The pitch used to be 150 for many, many years. It just stayed constant. And over the last uh, 10 to 8 years of moving to 130, we have now 55 micron pitch uh, in production with the uh, HBMs, uh, the high bandwidth uh, memory uh, are, is really a 55 micron pitch, and that is creating uh, the need of uh, how do we package this uh, 55 micron pitch uh, chip if the laminate and the package typically can only support the high wiring, uh, high, high pitch uh, of 150 or so. And so, additionally, uh, we are looking at uh, 30 micron pitch and less than uh, 10 micron pitch. So, uh, and all of this is enabling heterogeneous uh, integration. And heterogeneous integration is referred to as the, uh, uh, the integration of separate manufacturer components into a high level assembly. What we know now is uh, being called system in a package. Instead of having uh, a package that will just uh, take one chip into the organic package, et cetera, 
you have many chips that are now uh, connected within a particular uh, package or, or, or laminate. And you can have uh, these chips now can be of uh, various nodes altogether, as well as to have different components as, as MEMS or passive components, et cetera. So you are creating a package uh, of all these various uh, technologies, and that's what, you know, we can constitute a second uh, system in package. And an example of this is uh, AAC uh, listed over here. Now, in the mobile uh, arena, all of these technologies are coming uh, to, to concentrate, uh, to produce something that now is uh, extremely uh, advanced. And this is really the enablement of all these various technologies coming into a single uh, highly functional uh, product. The, this particular talk today, uh, we're gonna talk about these two elements, number three and number six uh, in this particular chart. We're gonna talk about basically the high performance elements of, uh, of uh, this uh, system. Now, what I did over here is uh, basically I, I moved the, uh, or segregated the different product types. Uh, there are many product types. Here I'm talking mainly about the mobile application, the AI, and the low-end application, but you know, I'm not really covering uh, many other, like automobile, auto, et cetera. Uh, so, mobile applications, is uh, what we call cell phones. And here, the dominant factor is thin and light. That's, you know, when you don't want to carry a 20 pound uh, PC with you, you want to carry a tiny little light uh, cell phone. The main uh, packaging uh, technology that we use is really uh, wafer level package. And this is a fanning or find out with a level package. Uh, they also have uh, vertical interconnection, package on package, as well as uh, in-ship integrated packages. So that's a mobile application. Uh, AI, accelerators, and servers, the dominant factor over here is performance and reliability. And because of the HPM, uh, we are seeing uh, the three main uh, technology, packaging technology, uh, evolving to accommodate the HPM. Uh, one of them is uh, the 2.5D uh, technology, which is basically a silicon carrier, and we'll talk about this uh, later on. We have the Intel Bridge uh, technology that integrates a, a silicon die, just wiring uh, to interconnect uh, two, two chips uh, within the uh, package. And then we have the laminate IO uh, pitch improvements uh, through the ISOP and, and other technologies uh, that are coming. And the, the third category over here is the uh, low-end applications. And the low-end applications, the dominant factor is a cost uh, in terms of the interconnection. And we have uh, wire bonding as the main uh, element of uh, interconnection. This is uh, an overall view of uh, chip connection to a package. And you can see that uh, wire bonding is really the biggest uh, portion of the pie. Uh, as we go in time, it just uh, continues to, to be the biggest uh, chip. And you can see this is a, a 305 billion uh, estimated uh, uh, technology. So, the next, this is uh, single die war bonding. Next one is uh, multiple die uh, war bonding, such as you know the one that's shown over here. And then you have the flip chip, which is around 25% of the total interconnect. And the tiny little sliver over here, which is the advanced uh, packages and advanced uh, fan out with a little packages. And this is sort of the uh, part of the talk that we have to make. 
There's a lot of improvements in war bonding. We will not be discussing it today, but uh, they have done tremendously uh, uh, increases on pitch, as well as uh, material cost uh, reduction, going from, from gold to a more le less expensive uh, wires and multi-tier uh, war bond. Okay, now, um, let's see over here. The, uh, I wanted to level set in terms of uh, the packaging uh, technology. So this is over here, the chip, and the chip uh, traditionally for flip chip is uh, we put a solder, uh, tin silver solder interconnection. This is uh, the underfill that protects the chip uh, for mechanical damage and thermocycle. It creates a very intimate contact between the chip and the laminate carrier. And for high performance, this chip very, gets very hot and therefore you have uh, heat spreaders and heat sinks attached to it. And this over here is what we call a first level interconnect. Then the second level interconnect is when you take this uh, module, which is the, uh, the chip uh, connected to the package, and you connect that to the wiring board. And that's the second level interconnect. Now, this particular package could be ceramic, could be uh, laminate, uh, could be wafer level package in which uh, the chip is integrated within the package, it's not uh, separated, and it could be an interposer plus the laminate. That basically means the chip connects to the interposer and then the interposer connects uh, to the laminate. So these are the, uh, the main uh, substrate carriers that are then connected uh, to the wiring board. The connection of the chip to the package is uh, done through reflow. In this particular example, which is uh, the, the more, more typical example, what you have is your laminate package. This is an organic uh, laminate that has a copper wiring that uses to redistribute the chip pitch down into uh, the Volgue array. So you start with this particular pitch, and at the end, you end up with a larger pitch that the laminate can, uh, can then join to the board. The board technology doesn't support 150 micron pitch or 50 micron pitch, et cetera, and therefore you need to translate the pitch to, through the substrate, through this uh, laminate, down into the board uh, pitch. And so that's the main function of, of, uh, of the substrate, and that is to carry the current and redistribute the pitch. In this case, what you see is that the package here, this in this case is a laminate uh, package, organic laminate, uh, is larger than the chip and is tested a priori as well as the chip is tested. So you get good electrically good chip joined to a good electrically good laminate and joins through, then uh, through reflow, then you go in and put uh, on the fill and finally, uh, you join uh, and put the VGA over here. If you have more than one chip, then uh, you could have, you know, chips A, chip B, and capacitors, et cetera. This will be a system in package. You can create various uh, components over here to integrate this package and make it more functional uh, through the various uh, uh, chip connections. One of the issues over here is uh, the uh, cracking of the underfill, uh, for example, or you could have uh, voids, or uh, when you have a CT mismatch between the chip and the uh, laminate, organic laminate, then you get uh, high stress on the corner die, uh, corner uh, C4s or corner uh, solder connection of the die that in, in turn translate into cracking uh, of the uh, EOK layers within the die. And so what happens there is that uh, during the joining process, uh, during the reflow and the cooling process, you get uh, the laminate to expand very high, 
and then when it cools, it starts to contra contract, but the dye doesn't really shrink as much as the laminate, and then the, the laminate uh, transmits the stress down into the solder, and then uh, cracking occurs over here. And so one of the elements that, that people have developed is uh, instead of going through a reflow, is a thermal compression bonding, uh, which basically takes the dye uh, and heats just the uh, C4, the chip gets heated and compressed down into the organic carrier over here. And by that, then the cooling uh, of this process since the laminate doesn't get heated to the same temperature as the dye, the shrinkage of the laminate is much reduced, and therefore the stresses that are transmitted are much less. Another application for this technology is uh, very fine pitch. If you have really very fine pitch, you need to have uh, thermal compression bonding uh, to be able to uh, properly align uh, this uh, the C4 uh, or the micropeeler into the laminate uh, pad. Another key element that you see over here is the non-conductive phase. The non-conductive phase uh, in the previous slide, what you saw is that after you finish the chip joining, then you put the capillary on the field. And the non-conductive phase in general is uh, a material that enables you to serve as the underfill. So when you do the thermal compression bonding, you end up with a system that already has the underfill in it. And so uh, the, this is really a very short cycle in terms of uh, uh, reflow uh, process. It's a very, very short cycle, and you put a tremendous amount of force to basically make the interconnection. So that's a level set. Now let's move into uh, uh, find out with a level package uh, technology. And in this particular scenario, what you end up with is that the, this is the end result. You start with a die, with, with the size of the die, and you end up with a micro VGA or some sort of balls that are the same dimensions of the die. And so the intent of all this is really to bypass the substrate uh, meaning joining this type into a substrate and then joining the substrate into the board, you bypass all that together and you put very large uh, micro VGAs on top of the die so that you can now join this die to the board. And so the way that this is done is you start with the silicon wafer finished, uh, then you put the uh, copper wiring which is known as the RDL, the redistribution layer. And finally, you end up uh, putting the micro VGA and doing the dicing. Um, in a top view of this, before the VGAs are deposited, you can see the, uh, the, the wiring level uh, going from what used to be a wire bond pad. Typically, this, this uh, pad will be wire bond into the board, but now you are redistributing them inside the chip so that you can put uh, a flip chip connection, sort of ball connection, and, and so as such. Another uh, pictorial cross-section view over here is uh, you have your die, you terminate the die with the aluminum, and then uh, you put the wafer level finding processes, which consists of uh, polymer, a polymer, a redistribution layer made out of copper through pattern exoplating, a second polymer, and then you could have also uh, UVM under bone metallurgy, typically nickel gold uh, on top. So this, you have four levels of mass, and this enables you, in essence, to finish a package that now you can quickly put onto the board. There are certain issues associated with that, and that is uh, you can redistribute it, but you have to be very careful where you, where you put this uh, BGA pad. 
uh, mainly because uh, you could have the VGA pad, for example, be directly on top of the final level, aluminum level, with the via uh, on the semiconductor ship, and this will create the cracking, uh, mainly as we discussed due to the white bond problem and the CTE mismatch. And so the best place to put this uh, pad is really a such over here, where you put the pads directly on top of uh, organic, uh, the first organic uh, layer, uh, polymer layer, and away from the uh, uh, via interconnection uh, of the uh, semiconductor chip. Now we will move into what we call fan out uh, wafer level package. So the fan in wafer level package we discussed the size of the package was the same size of the die. Uh, in essence, you start with the die and you build the package around the die. In the fan in, uh, that was the fan in. In the final wafer level package, uh, what we do is the package is uh, larger uh, than the die, it's larger than the chip. And the reason for this is that you have many more IO connections that you need to transfer into the uh, uh, redistribute out, and the die is just too small. So you need to expand the area of the die. And you do that uh, through this uh, process uh, uh, known as uh, fan out wafer level package. So uh, to describe that, you have uh, a top view over here and then side view over here. I'll talk about uh, referring to the side view. And you start with your processor die. And this is a tested die that you finish, you do testing, and now you pick the good dies. And the good dies, then you put them in a wafer style uh, pattern because uh, a lot of the processing is using the existing uh, semiconductor wafer tooling. And therefore, uh, you put it into a circle. This is this has, you know, some disadvantages, certainly, because you're trying to fit a, uh, a square within the circle and, and you have a lot of lost areas, but nevertheless, uh, the infrastructure is there. So you take your pre-tested die, put it down, facing down uh, into a silicon or a glass carrier with an adhesive uh, shown here in blue. Then you put an overmold on that area uh, over the whole wafer, and then uh, you flip it and you release the glass carrier as such. And now the overmold area without the glass carrier is really the, the silicon wafer. I mean, just, it's just a wafer that you can now continue processing into the existing infrastructure, wafer infrastructure. And there, you do the lithography, et cetera, to reproduce and create the RDL, the redistribution layers. And at the end, uh, you go in and put the last polymer layer and the BGA deposition. And so this is a cross-section where you have your ship, you have the mold compound that extends the ship, and you have the uh, <coughs> polyma one the copper, uh, RDL, and then the, uh, and the BGA. A good example, uh, uh, a good comparison of these two technologies is here. Wafer level fanin is a small die, typically less than seven millimeter, uh, and you have a less number of IOs. You can only fit as many IOs as the die dimension supports. In fan out with a level package, uh, your die cannot support so many I.O. And therefore, you need to extend the uh, number of I.O.s and you do that through the technology that we just talked about. This also enables us to do uh, what we call package on package. And as you know, in the silicon die, you could have uh, through silicon vias, which uh, sometimes you can connect from one side of the silicon to the other side. In the package area, you have uh, through mold vias. And so you could have a via over here through this mold that then 
uh, enables you to put another package on top of this package. And we'll talk about that uh, shortly. A good example of uh, fan out Wesso level package is uh, this uh, presentation or, or paper by John Lau. And what you can see here, he took four dies, discrete dies, that then interconnect them into the uh, fan out Wesso level package. And this whole thing is just you know, one of the small uh, squares over here. And at the end, when you dive it, this is the package as such. And so looking at it in cross-section, just a small area, let's say like over here in cross-section, what you see is the chip. You see that this particular uh, application required two redistribution layers and three uh, dielectric layers. And so you have from the chip, uh, the aluminum pad, you connect to redistribution one, um, another polymer via, uh, RDL2, and then the micro BGA deposition. One thing, if you can look very closely over here, you can see the color of the copper changes from copper to sort of gray, you know, around this point. And that means, uh, just looking at it, uh, I'm assuming that the uh, soda, which is thin, reacted with the copper wiring, and in essence, created intermetallic up to this area. This is not uh, a robust structure. And therefore, uh, a lot of people, what they do is they put a nickel gold layer, as we discussed uh, previously, over here so that uh, you can isolate the copper uh, from the uh, tin uh, through, the, through the nickel uh, and the nickel tin into metallics. So this is a very nice example of uh, a fan out with a level package. If we look now at the, uh, uh, let's say, iPhone 8, uh, and the, what technologies were used, you can see fan out a silicon uh, in, in system in package, one of those. You have eight uh, silicon in, uh, system in package, which is, uses the old technology of the laminate technology and the dyes that are uh, a reflow on top of the laminate, multiple dyes as uh, we have done you know, traditionally for many years. Then you have 11 wafer level packages, which is a sheet scale package. Sheet scale package basically means that it's a fan in uh, wafer level package. And so the size of the die is the size of the package and then two memory dies. And so uh, it's a very, very uh, uh, good use of uh, this technology. Now, I wanted to uh, explore more of the uh, fan, uh, of the wafer level package uh, technology, and we have uh, new terms over here. The first one is uh, chip first, face down. Chip first, basically I put the chip first into the carrier, and this over here is what we already talked about. We take the chip, we put it into the carrier, we then overmold, release the carrier, and do the RDL and put the PGAs. So this is, and then do the dicing. So this is what we already discussed. This is chip first, face down. You could have chip last, face down, which is, uh, in this case, you start with the silicone carrier and the adhesive, and then on top of that, you build your RDL first. Once you finish with the RDL, then you do a chip joining through micropeeler into this uh, RDL, followed by wafer level uh, molding package, and, and then release the carrier, the adhesive, and do the BGA deposition and, and dicing. So you can see there's uh, two different technologies over here. They accomplish the same you end up sort of with the same result, but there's certain uh, trade-offs. The first one, in this particular scenario, you have two sort of interconnection. You have the die to the package, with level package, and then you have the with level package to the board. And typically, the sort of interconnection is a weak point uh, in the system because of electromigration and other issues. 
so, but it has another advantage, and the advantage is that when you do the RDL, the redistribution layer, uh, you do it here on top of a silicon or glass carrier, and you do it first. There's no molding uh, as such, and you can create very fine dimensions. Let's say two micron flying test bases here versus in this RDL, you may be able to do 10 or 8, maybe 5, but you cannot do two micron flying test bases. So you can increase the uh, technology uh, and the uh, redistribution layers here uh, versus on, on the other system. Okay, so let's talk about this one over here, which is chip first face off. This is the same. This one was chip last face off. Now this is uh, chip first face off. So in this particular scenario, you put the, the chip, but the active area of the chip is facing upwards, and this technology requires some uh, copper pillars over here. So it's the same process. You put the you put the pre-tested die into the carrier. You overmold. You planarize, and now you're creating the interconnection on the top areas. You put your RDL and you flip the system and put the BGAs and dies. So this looks, you know, a little bit complicated way, but it enables on the right hand side uh, to be a, more, a lot more uh, complex system. In this case, it's the same uh, chip first face off, but what happens here is that you're putting it on top of a already RDL system. So this is an RDL and you have this large copper uh, via or copper pillars over here uh, next to the processor. So when you do the overmold and the, the planarization of the overmold area, you will now have a very flat surface that you can do as another RDL or redistribution interconnect layers over here. And now you can connect the top layer with the bottom layer uh, through the through mold vias, these very large pillars that you initially had created. Uh, the next step over here is to build the micro VGA uh, that you will have uh, done, as in the other case over here, you do micro VGA, you put the capacitors, et cetera, and now you release the glass and put the, uh, flip the system over and join another module, uh, in this case, a memory module uh, to this RDL that you had created initially. So it's a little bit complicated, but uh, the two things you can see over here. One is that because you have your glass uh, carrier all through the system, the RDL technology can be a very fine pitch. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing that you can notice over here, uh, which is a, a minus to this system, is that the processor, this is the element that gets very, very hot, right? When you touch your, your cell phone, it's, it's uh, some heat there, that's a processor. And the processor, unfortunately, in this system, is sort of embedded in the whole package. And that basically means there's very little cooling available for the processor. So that's uh, a very a negative uh, in, in this technology. Now, the through mold via uh, that we talked about was uh, this one over here, uh, in which you first have your co very large copper pillar uh, in the mold. But there are many other technologies that you can use and that are available. For example, you could do the full uh, mold fill and then later of late through that, through that uh, mold area and, and electroplate copper fill this. So that's, that's one way. Or you can laser of late and put a solder bowl so you can have solder connection between this side uh, of the package and the other side of the package so you can do a second uh, package interconnect over here. Or you can use a chip that has through silicon vias uh, as the interconnection between one RDL and the top RDL 
or even after dicing, you could do a side wall uh, connection. So there are many technologies uh, that are being developed to, to do this uh, through more via application. Now, uh, these are a few examples, uh, Galaxy 7 and iPhone 8. And this is uh, what we just discussed about uh, before, where you have your, your logic with the RDL. Uh, in this picture, it's missing, but you have a second RDL uh, on top over here, followed by the DRAM uh, package. So this is a package on package, and you can see the processor die uh, and the module, uh, a memory uh, die module over here. And then all of this is connected uh, to the laminate, which is this down here. This is the main, the main board. Some issues that uh, come about, and that is that in general, because of cost uh, issues, the, uh, the initial technology uh, that was developed is that the board connection, the package connection to the board was not underfill. And if you don't have underfill, that basically means that if you drop your cell phone, then the solder uh, could crack. And, and so that's uh, one of the elements over here, if you don't have any, uh, any underfill. And typically the board manufacturer people, they do not use uh, underfill. That's one of the reasons also why you have such a large uh, BGA because it can take uh, some of the stress uh, between the package uh, and the board. But uh, more recently, uh, some people are introducing underfill because uh, you can get uh, severely uh, cracks uh, through uh, the thermal cycle uh, or uh, the drop test. Another advancement in the uh, in this area is the large format application, in which instead of doing a circle uh, processing, you do a very large area uh, application as, as such. And so there's a lot of work, particularly in Fraunhofer, are developing this uh, technology. And so a summary for the wafer level package is uh, listed here. Basically, there's a lot of challenges. You need the RDL to be uh, low temperature RDL. You have a lot of wafer warpage, which uh, has handling issues, a pattern recognition for the exposed tool, the thinning and the uh, dicing defects uh, can create cracks which creates also reliability issues uh, in the wafer level package. As you go into finer dimensions, like one less than one microns, we start seeing electromigration uh, issues. The mole uh, through mole via TVM is another area of, uh, uh, of development for cost reduction and increased uh, fish density. Moisture related issues, uh, the Cooling of the processor die that is embedded in the package is a big issue. And because of all that, uh, wafer level package really is, in my opinion, doesn't really support uh, the need for the server applications. Uh, one way to maybe avoid some of these issues uh, is uh, through die partitioning. Instead of having a very large processor die, you can have chiplets, and potentially that could be a viable solution but uh, today, this uh, wafer level package application is uh, a cell phone uh, driven. Now, for the servers, we need advanced technologies, something reliable. And so there's uh, three main technologies that came about. One is uh, the assisting laminate that we talked about initially uh, that cannot support the HPN, which is 55 micron pitch. What, what uh, uh, Shinko, for example, has done through ITOS technology is put a patch. This is a high density uh, copper polymer dielectric patch on top of the existing laminate technology. And that, in essence, enables them to put two micron slime, two micro spaces, uh, where typically in the laminate you will never be able to do that. And so you, they, you create this by having it. Uh, on a large, let's say, uh, glass carrier, 
similar to the RDL, and then just taking that RDL and putting it directly on top of the laminate. And now you can just proceed with the standard uh, dye interconnection here. Uh, Intel has done something similar, uh, but they, uh, any, any uh, technology, and what they do is they put, a, they embed a silicon uh, chip over here, very thin silicon chip, and all it has is uh, X or, or Y uh, wiring levels over here that connect this bump to this bump. It just uh, interconnect two different dyes. And it's a very nice uh, technology, but it requires that the processor uh, will have two different type of uh, pitch uh, and at the, and the same level. And this is also very tricky uh, to fabricate. Looking at the cross section of the EMIB, you have your silicon uh, that is embedded into the organic package, and then that follows with two layers of uh, dielectrics that is used to, in essence, redistribute, ensure that uh, the X and Y position are precisely where they have to be so that when you do the joining of the ship, everything is aligned. One of the uh, issues that I see with this technology is also the fact that uh, the underfill that you use for the micro pillars over here uh, typically is different than the underfill that you would use for the large uh, C cores. But since you're doing the underfill at one level, you have to use the underfill for the micro pillar, which is uh, a less uh, robust uh, underfill. But this technology is uh, very uh, uh, unique and it can be expanded. You can have many high levels interconnect uh, regions uh, within the laminate. These are individual patches over here, individual chip, uh, embedded chips uh, within the same package. And so the other technology for the uh, high-end server uh, is the uh, 3D uh, interconnect or the 2.5D. In this particular case, what you have is a silicon interposer that has a via uh, connecting from one end to the other. So you have the micro peeler connection into the large C core. And as, as shown as here, you have the chip for the, and the HPN, you connect down into the interposer and you use an underfill. And then you take that package uh, and connect it into the laminate and, and then create the VGA, uh, deposit the VGA on the laminate and then connect the, lami connect the laminate into the board. So in this case, you could have the micro peeler use one uh, underfill and the large C4 uh, use a different uh, underfill. There are different ways of doing the uh, interconnection uh, process. Uh, you could have uh, the TSV uh, being uh, through silicon via. You can deposit them uh, in the via at the middle of the process uh, in the back end of the line. And then once you finish, you put this into a carrier and then you uh, thin down the silicon to expose uh, the copper and then do additional interconnection either to another silicon, uh, like silicon on silicon or into an interposer. You could have the, uh, the via uh, created at the very end, but this is really not as desirable because you have to block the areas and so you cannot do X and Y uh, uh, interconnection since you're blocking a lot of areas uh, within the uh, semiconductor plane. Uh, and or finally, uh, you can also do the, uh, the TSC at the end of the process. Uh, basically, you finish your full uh, uh, die, and then you put it into a carrier and you thin it such that now you can uh, create a through silicon via uh, opening and fill it with copper and do the interconnection that way. So these are various ways that you can do the interconnection. Now, uh, these are examples of the uh, interposer. 
This is uh, from AC uh, AMD uh, CG processor. You have the processor, a GPU, you have your memory stacks uh, with the HPMs uh, as shown a cross section over here. And then uh, on the interposer, connect everything through the interposer and the interposer then connects uh, to the laminate and eventually the laminate uh, to the board. So it's a very nice example of uh, a very advanced uh, processor. And this is really enabled by the uh, TSP. You could never put the HPM on top of uh, the uh, laminate. There's a cross section. In this case, you can see some redundant vias, uh, the micro pillar joining of the underfill one, the underfill two, uh, joining the interposer to the TSV down into the laminate uh, carrier. And this is a cross section of the HPM uh, for the high uh, bandwidth uh, memory uh, processor, uh, mem memory module. Another example of, uh, of this technology is the uh, Intel uh, Foveros. And in this case, this is a, well, a 3D technology. And so the difference between the, the interposer being a 2.5D, what we call 2.5D, or a 3D uh, technology is that this interposer is an active interposer. That basically means that it has uh, active components as opposed to just being an X and Y a connection between the memory and the and the chip, it has another chip in it. So this is a chip on chip, uh, a processor on processor. And this is a very, very high uh, advanced uh, technology. You have your memory module uh, connected to the advanced uh, active interposer, uh, and then also connected to the chip. And then that in turn gets connected uh, to the package and through the VGA, the package connect to the module. Okay, so uh, the other big technology uh, that uh, as we try to reduce the interconnection of the die to die, what you have over here is the, uh, what we call the hybrid technology. And that is you have your uh, processor one or the silicon uh, one, your silicon number two is here, is built basically the end of it is uh, the same, fabricated the same through copper uh, CMP. And then you just take these two ones and join them. That's done through surface activation, some cleaning, room temperature bonding that you bond the silicon oxide to silicon oxide. And then at the end, you do the uh, thermal annealing to expand the copper and create a uh, copper to copper oxide joining as such. Okay, so uh, as a summary, we wanted to see where we are in terms of the technology. Uh, and this is a chart by uh, Phil Garou uh, from Yol. And what you can see here is that uh, in the semiconductor world, well, they talk about, you know, seven nanometers, 10 nanometers, 100 nanometers, et cetera. And in the packaging world, we talk about 100 microns, 25 microns. So now it's uh, blurring out the ISOP, uh, technology. This is the uh, two micron flying subspaces patch uh, from uh, Shinko. It's uh, moving the package from traditionally 10 microns or 8 microns down to two micron lines and spaces. And the fan out uh, technology uh, through Info uh, has uh, five micron lines and spaces and it can go even lower. So there's uh, a big area of opportunity over here. In terms of the interconnection, what you see is uh, uh, the VGAs, the micro VGAs that came through the uh, fan out and fan in with the level package. Then you have the chip to package connection, uh, which is uh, through the C4 or the micro peeler. And finally, the chip to chip connection that could be uh, the micro peeler, like the uh, Intel uh, uh, 3D technology, or you could have uh, like a Sony uh, uh, image uh, sensor, a uh, copper to copper hybrid bonding. So that's uh, an overview of uh, how we are moving really uh, in time and the technology trends.
And finally, as a summary, you can see that uh, there's a lot of opportunities uh, coming ahead in terms of the packaging world. Uh, we just covered a couple of them, but you can see how uh, optical interconnection is coming and many other technologies that you can now integrate uh, within uh, the package. That uh, concludes uh, the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, Eric. Um, I can start with one. Actually, I have two. Uh, first, uh, do you see any developments uh, on the horizon for in for decreasing the pitch on uh, printed circuit board? Uh, that's uh, yeah. I I do not know. I'm not <laughs> really uh, involved in that area. But you can see that the package itself is uh, is is able to create the uh, the interconnection to the printer circuit board as relates to the micro VGA, right? Remember, some time ago there was only very large VGAs, mm -hmm. but now we're going into the micro VGAs, and that is uh, has driven already uh, interconnection uh, improvement uh, within the board. And so, uh, will we have more than that? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But okay. if there's a possibility on, on that, then that will certainly extend the uh, the size of the laminate that you can now join uh, into the board. Mm -hmm. And my second question would be, um, how will the advanced packaging structures adapt to the higher frequency band of uh, the 5G spectrum? Uh, yeah, I'm not <laughs> familiarized with the uh, uh, 5G requirements other than the the existing technologies that we have uh, are able uh, to support uh, the need for the uh, for the 5G. Mm -hmm. so what what we have now is able to uh, to support that in terms of the uh, interconnection needs, but certainly within the package. Uh, at the end is where you have the, uh, you know, the transmission, et cetera, the antennas and all of that, that, that can be integrated uh, within the package. And actually, one of the things that the web level package uh, enables you to do as well is uh, you can now have uh, integrated uh, antennas on top of, on top of the uh, uh, mold uh, areas as uh, let me see. Like in this uh, uh, scenario over here, instead of having a memory module, you could have uh, antennas uh, over here. Mm -hmm. I see. And you can properly integrate that uh, with the uh, processor. Okay, I have I have a number of questions that uh, are coming in on the chat line. Um, uh, one question is, uh, what is the largest size chip the fan out wafer level package can accommodate? Fan out uh, wafer level package. Oh, well, fan out, not, yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not too large. Uh, I will say around today te technology, uh, 15, uh, 15 millimeter per side. Mm -hmm. Um, any challenges that uh, need to be considered from solder paste deposition and solder powder sizes when it comes to heterogeneous integration? Well, most of the application over here uh, is, you know, that I described for the advanced technologies is uh, through a solder ball or pattern electroplating. Uh, they do not use uh, uh, solder screening. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there, there was some effort some time ago in ASC to eliminate the electroplating and basically screen uh, fine powder solder uh, through the photoresist uh, to create uh, a fine pitch uh, solder. Um, I'm not sure whether that uh, they were successful in doing that, 
but the majority of the applications over here is uh, is really through pattern electroplating uh, mm -hmm. for the fine pitch uh, joining, and for the BGAs and micro BGAs are done through uh, uh, ball drop. Okay. Well, on, on behalf of my employer, I'm glad that uh, the electroplating was not replaced by the screen printing. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Any uh, further questions? Um, I would. I, okay. Um, oh, here's here's another question. Um, uh, why does the uh, EMIB have organic laminate over it, uh, as opposed to connecting dyes directly to the EMIB without uh, um, BMVs in the organic substrate? Uh, okay, so let's see over here the image. Uh, the question is why do they have organic layers here? Yes. Okay, uh, and, and I do not know. But I, w I can speculate for one thing is that uh, <laughs> when you're trying to join, when you're trying to join large pads and very small via, the coplanarity of this system is really very critical. And it's even more critical, the coplanarity of the incoming uh, surface. So if you try to do the joining right here, uh, this image is uh, connected with an adhesive. And so you cannot really control the height precisely of this image. And you cannot control the X and Y uh, dimension very, very precisely. So you need to have a couple of layers to translate the height and translate the X and Y uh, or theta rotation of this connection uh, to the micro uh, connection, micro pillar connection here. I so see. you need these two layers in order to ensure that now the large C4s and the small C4s are joined within the same plane. Okay, thank you. And besides what Eric said, you know, it also allows them to bring power in from the sides since the EMIB doesn't have any power. So they can right. feed power or, you know, here, reference pads. Over. You know, yeah. in the areas that are EMIB connected adjacent from adjacent areas. So it helps with probably signal integrity and power distribution as well. Yeah, going in a power line going from here to the EMIB area. Yeah. Okay, more questions. Uh, dye, thinning, <laughs> dye thinning is clearly critical for mobile and uh, handheld device packages. How critical is dye thinning for server and AI processors? And if so, what dye thickness uh, is necessary for high performance server and AI processors? Okay, uh, I will split that question uh, into two. Uh, one of them is really the uh, interposer, right? Because during the, the creation of the interposer, yeah. this is done by thinning the dye uh, and exposing the TFC. So dye thinning is uh, uh, an integral element of the 3D uh, and 2.5D uh, technology. It's really a must-have. Um, mm -hmm. Then the next part is really the, the chip itself, not the processor for the chip. And here you can see Intel has... Uh, uh, this chip is very small. This area from here to here is probably maybe 100 microns or so. And so this dye is also very thin, 100 microns. Uh, and as opposed to the initial 750 microns uh, incoming for a 300 millimeter. And so one of the reasons that you can thin the dye is certainly to uh, enable it to reduce the stress uh, during joining. Uh, for yes. example, as we talked about uh, over here, you can have uh, the, the, what we call the white bump. These are due to the stress uh, during the joining process. Uh, when you take the dye and you join and you start to cool, the CT mismatch between this uh, uh, laminate and the 
dies quite a bit, you know, 18 versus uh, 2.6. And what happens here is that the lamina starts to warp. And mm -hmm. the dye, if it's very rigid, it will, in essence, uh, start taking the stress on the C4. However, if you have a very thin dye and the laminate works, the dye is able to work with it. Uh -huh. and, and that will, in essence, reduce the, uh, uh, the stresses over here. So as you have larger and larger dyes, uh, you are a, you basically have a need to thin the dye so that to reduce the stresses of the dye at mm -hmm. uh, joining. Assuming that you're using this technology, I mean, you could use the uh, thermal compression bonding uh, and et cetera. So there's, but in, in essence, uh, dye thinning is, uh, is a very key element uh, of uh, HI. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question uh, here in the uh, chat window. Ah, actually, uh, a couple more. Um, can you say what types of materials are used for the molding compound? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're, they're, epo they're epoxy uh, type of uh, uh, materials, but uh, uh, with silicon uh on them mm -hmm. and <clears throat> and uh, and they they come you know like in in pellets or liquids and you can do uh a compression molding uh which is the most popular uh way of uh, of doing this uh, mold compound but uh, but no, not as familiarized with the mold compound myself. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see one more here. Um, and uh, uh, based on your slides, it seems there's no place left for wire bonding for interconnections. And is that true? Now, before you answer, I, I also remember one of your first slides showed that wire bonding was the uh, still the preponderant method for making connections. So um, I, I see that uh, um, the, the interesting stuff is really still so, still kind of a small fraction of the total. That's right. That's right. It's a very small fraction uh, of the total. I mean, the, the percentage-wise, you know, in money-wise, the pie keeps increasing to 63 billion to uh, 308 billion. Mm -hmm. so it's certainly, uh, we are all increasing, but, uh, but what we talked about today is really a small area of the whole interconnection. Yeah, um, but it uh, looks big enough money-wise to be able to support a lot of economic activity. So that which uh, is uh, kind of why some of us are here. Oh yeah, no, it's it's a very very key element, <laughs> and as you can see, it's tremendous amount of process. Uh, you may want to have someone uh, to talk about this technology, war bonding, because there's tremendous amount of uh, inventiveness uh, going through these uh, multi die components. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those yeah, those, those are some amazing options. pictures. Okay, so. Um... I want to thank you for your presentation and for uh, um, taking on all of the questions afterwards. Um, uh, it's it's too no bad we. Uh, I, I I'm afraid if we all unmute to applaud you, it's going to be a whole <laughs> cacophony. But uh, <laughs> but. No problem. <laughs> but we. Yeah, thank you very much. This, this, so. Um, yeah, we, we really appreciate uh, your, your going out of your way to uh, um, give us this presentation. Uh, you're very welcome, and thank you uh, for uh, the invitation. I'm, I'm glad that uh, we find the time uh, to yeah. do it. So we'll, we'll definitely stay in touch. Um, so, uh, Matt, is there any, any uh, uh, business that we need to attend to to conclude? Uh, just thanks, Eric, and thanks, Richard, and thanks for everybody for joining. Uh, remember, we have a symposium session next month, and then in December, 
We're going to have uh, our, our friend Dave give a talk on snow trains as a non-technical meeting for us. So stay tuned for that. That should be interesting as well. And all are invited to partake in all of this stuff. Thank you. Okay, and uh, as as we mentioned, um, the 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 availability of the recording of tonight's meeting will be announced uh, on our on our chapter website at some point in the near future. And and it'll be mentioned in our newsletter. Okay. Okay. So uh, thank you, and uh, I believe we will adjourn. Thank you, thank you, Richard. Thank you. Yeah, have a good night. Here, good night. Thanks, everybody. Good night.